right. Well, good morning and welcome to uh, today's presentation. Uh, really appreciate uh, everybody in attendance. We had a lot of interest in this and we've been, we've been seeing more and more interest uh, as companies are really looking to move to the cloud for their uh, accounting software, um, particularly in the construction industry. So this presentation today, we are going to focus in on uh, some of the benefits of upgrading to Sage Intact construction. Um, for those of you who uh, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, my name is Nick Brorson. I'm one of the founders of Sockeye. And today we'll also have uh, Eric Ward, one of the other founders of Sockeye, who leads up our accounting software uh, practice. Just a little bit about Sockeye. Uh, so we've been around since 2007. Uh, our focus really is uh, pretty deep in the construction uh, industry. So we have helped a lot of companies go from on-premise uh, on premise accounting software and make that transition into the Sage uh, cloud accounting. Uh, one of the things that you know, we're very proud of, we have implemented more uh, Sage Intact construction than any other partner in the United States. Uh, and it's, it's an area that we have a lot of depth and expertise in. Uh, we are a Sage Intech Premier Partner, which is one, of, which is the highest designation that Sage has in their partner program. And what that really means to you is we have a lot of depth and expertise in helping people achieve the the goals and the benefits they're they're wanting out of their uh, cloud accounting software. Uh, in February of this year, end of January, February, we did acquire Skyline, which I know there's a lot of Skyline customers on here, and we want to welcome you. Uh, this was a strategic partnership or acquisition for Sockeye and, and Skyline, quite frankly, to recognizing the value of the long history that many of you have had with Sage 300 as your primary accounting system and recognizing there's an opportunity here to help migrate um, those customers when the time is right to a cloud accounting offering from Sage um, with a migration and an upgrade path that is seamless and really allows you to sort of harvest the benefits of moving to a cloud-based accounting system. Just a little bit about the history, sort of where Intact resides within the Sage ecosystem. Uh, we have Timberline, which I think a lot of you still refer to Sage 300 CRE as, um, I know we do. Timberline and Sage 100 Contractor are still products that Sage uh, fully plans to support. Uh, but the acquisition of Intact from Sage uh, four years ago was very strategic. And the primary sort of market that there was, there was a large opportunity for with Sage was the construction industry, which Sage is the largest provider of construction accounting software in North America. And their offerings currently, you have the ability within Sage 100 and Sage 300 to operate in a on-premise environment, which I know a lot of you currently have, which means you have your servers located um, at your office and they're supported and maintained by yourself or a, a partner that you're using to, to manage those. They also have this hybrid environment, which allows you to find a um, partner like a Swissnet and host your, your Sage 300 applications in another um, offsite environment. Uh, Sage Intact is a bit different. Sage Intact is a fully uh, multi-entity cloud uh, accounting package. And what that means is, you know, it's available on any browser, any device, it's available wherever you have internet access. And that also means there's no maintenance, there's no cost for upgrades from one version to the next. And Sage is actually able to roll out pretty significant enhancements to the product on a quarterly basis. Meaning, um, you know, instead of the every, you know, maybe three years, you're getting a major release from Sage on Sage 300, you're getting a quarterly release of pretty significant technology and enhancements within Sage Intact um, quarterly. And the, the, the rate at which the product is being developed and enhanced is has direct impact to those companies that have chose to adopt it. A uh, few other things about Sage Intact for those of you who are sort of new to it um, that I should point out. 
Uh, Sage Intax actually the only software package that hasn't been endorsed by the AICPA. Um, so I'm just going to pause there for a second. That endorsement, um, that's across any software package um, out there. And this is a significant uh, endorsement. And Eric, when he gets into the demo, will articulate some of the areas of why uh, the AICPA um, gave this endorsement of the product. Uh, likewise, there's from a consumer perspective, uh, G2 Crowd is sort of a consumer reports, if you will, for business software. Uh, it has been the number one rated uh, accounting package, cloud accounting system in the mid market for years. And this is sort of a testament to the usability and enhancements that Sage is making within the product. And then, you know, likewise, from an analyst perspective that looks across all of the ERP systems, uh, Sage Intex has been recognized as a visionary from Gardner, uh, which, you know, further enhances its credibility of being one of the leaders within the market uh, of cloud accounting software. So just a few sort of bullet points, and then we're going to get right into the demo. A um, couple of things I want you to look, uh, kind of keep an eye on as Eric's going through the demo today. Uh, there's a lot of capabilities around workflow within Sage Intact that previously um, a lot of companies would have to bring a third party uh, piece of software in to accomplish. We can do a lot of those things natively within Intact. Integration capabilities are also an area that are significantly enhanced with this cloud accounting platform. And so what I mean by that is we have the ability with Intact to tap into hundreds of other line of business applications, which gives you as a consumer of this software options to pick the best piece of software that works best for you. So operationally, whether that be Procore, whether that be Red Team, whether that be you know, something else that's very specific to your, um, your industry, we're able to tap into that and um, have the systems talk seamlessly back and forth, which provides a ton of value to the operational side of the house, as well as the back office accounting function. And then of course, visibility. Uh, I wanna be able to get meaningful data out. I wanna be able to uh, give my president, give my uh, you know, operational manager visibility into how we're performing, both from a financial perspective, as well as potentially serving up some operational data that gives context to what that financial uh, information looks like. And so when Eric's getting into that demo today, we'll definitely touch on the dashboards, the, the ease of use, which an accounting, somebody in the accounting department will be able to generate their own dashboards, generate their own reports without necessarily having to rely on IT or a third party um, to help produce those. And then um, just one other thing I wanted to, to briefly touch on, which is, you know, there's been a big investment from a lot of you in this, your ecosystem, uh, particularly for those in the Sage 300 world. Uh, one thing that I just wanted to let you know of is much of this functionality has been um, ported or made available into the Sage Intact world, although not all of it's necessary. So we do have the ability to, you know, integrate with uh, HH2 and paperless and, you know, all of those uh, timber scan, all of those products that you're already used to, um, which allows some continuity from this upgrade from Sage 300 over to Sage Intact as an example. So uh, as we, um, on this last slide, I'm gonna turn this over to Eric Ward, who is going to be uh, walking us through the application today. Um, couple housekeeping items. I will be keeping uh, a look at the chat and the Q&A section. So if you have a question as Eric's going through, please feel free to just use the, the chat tool or the Q&A to ask that question. Um, I'll either be able to answer it myself as we're going through, or I may ask Eric to address it as part of the demo. Um, so just know that that option is available and we'll be keeping an eye on it. So with that being said, Eric, I am going to make you the host. All right, thanks, Nick. I'll share my screen out here. All right, so you should be able to see Sage Intact up on the screen right now. Uh, 
this is the application. This is the, the browser that's displaying the application. When you first log in, what you'll notice in, in comparison to some of the legacy uh, on-prem Windows-based solutions is the sleek design, the user interface. Um, it's right out of the gate. It's real easy to learn and, and use. It's real intuitive. So as I move around in here, you'll notice that the piece of, different pieces of the software are, are um, pretty functional and intuitive, like I said, intuitive to use in, in um, how you wanna get that information out. So when I'm logging in, you can see up here on the top where it says that I'm at the top level. One of the benefits of Sage Intact is that it is immediately consolidating all entities. So when I click on this drop down here, you'll see several other entities. I have six entities in this specific um, uh, design here, this implementation. And if I'm at the top level, it means I'm reporting at a consolidated financial level in real time. Um, so if somebody posts a transaction, I immediately see it rolled up with all my entities. If I want to switch to a different entity, I can simply select it from the drop down here. It just opens up another tab on my browser with that specific entity. And now I'm looking at the dashboard for that entity specifically. Okay, you can limit who has access to which entity and, and all those great things as well. Um, but even at the top level here, I can still transact and uh, report on all the entities. There's no longer any need to sign out and sign back in into a different window uh, to switch companies. All right. So the design here on these dashboards is that it's pulling information across the entire system. I can pull information from the financial system. I can pull information from projects. I can pull information AP and AR across the entire platform into one dashboard and consolidate all that information into, uh, you, you know, into one presence. And from that, I can also drill down. So on any of these values here, I can just click on a value and look at the details of that dollar amount and where that's made up. All right. This dashboard right now, I'm filtering it as of a certain date. So I can choose any date that I want to in my dashboard and display the information and all the reports in it as, as of a certain date. So if within this date, if I just hit the letter T, it jumps to today. And then when I tab off, I can apply and now I'm looking at my dashboard for as of today. But when the new applications and the new modern system, this next generation of accounting software was configured, it wasn't just the design that was taken into account and the user experience, really it, the system as it was built was looked at how we track information, how we report information and what type of information do we want to track and report on. So we can slice and dice this data uh, quite easily. Right now um, I'm looking at the dashboard with all of my data, but I have these three filters on this dashboard for a location or a job or an item. And I can use those to filter a specific job, for example, or a group of jobs. So if I wanted to see all of my jobs that had to do with hotels, I could click on, click on hotels, click on apply, and it's going to re-render my dashboard with all of my hotel type projects. Okay, that includes my financial statements. So down here, you can see my financial statements. And those financial statements um, are filtered by the projects then that have hotels. Furthermore, if I wanted to look at all my subcontract uh, work, I could click on subcontract and it's going to re-render just the hotel jobs. And within those hotel jobs, just the subcontract work. So again, we can slice in that data and, and uh, get the information exactly to what we want. I'm just gonna click on clear here and clear that filter and just go back to all of my data as of today. All right, so this dashboard here, I'm pulling in reports across, like I mentioned, all over, this, all over the system. 
where I can see amounts that hit um, trans specific transactions like the build amounts and the total cost amounts per my projects over here. I can also see committed amounts. So things on purchase order or subcontract agreements and my estimates and contract amounts and any calculations with those dollar amounts. Another great thing that we can do with Intec that um, I just I briefly mentioned earlier that's difficult in the legacy systems is to drill down to the source transactions. So for example, if I wanted to see this, uh, the commitments on this um, Fullerton Warehouse San Antonio project, I can click on this dollar value and it's gonna bring up all the subcontract agreements and purchase orders that make up this, uh, this dollar value. Furthermore, I can drill, keep drilling down until I get to the source transaction. So this is gonna bring me to the actual commitment journal entry where I can see what accounts were hit. I can see all the purchase orders that make up that, that entry and even go back into that entry. And if this purchase order is still open, I can even go back and edit this purchase order um, if I have the security access to do so. So I can see, for example, this purchase order here has an attachment. So right here, I can click on this paper clip to view the attachment. So it looks like a screenshot of some cleaning supplies here. Okay, so I can see the, the backup of the information. That attachment could be uh, an Excel spreadsheet or, or multiple different documents if I wanted it to be. As I scroll down, I can see how this transaction was coded the job it was coded to, the cost codes, the cost types, of course, the item, the location. If I wanted to track things by department, I can do that. I can add in intact, these are called different dimensions. So no longer do we have a, in a, um, a GL account that, or a GL string that is several different segments. Instead, we have different dropdowns and then we can slice that data based off of any of those dropdowns. All right, I can see this dollar amount here is 63.51. Um, one of the great things about Intact and one of the reasons why um, it's so supported in documentation is because of this chatter feature down here on the bottom. So on any transaction or any project or any vendor or customer, we have the ability to comment about that record we can tag individual people. So you can see at this first comment, Emma Ward, that's the user I'm logged in as, tagged Josh Barrett and said, this attachment shows $43.51. Why don't the amounts match? And Josh would have received an email saying that I asked him a question. And when he clicked on that email, it would bring him right to this transaction. He would be able to see the screenshot and the transaction itself and then respond back to my question. Oh, I added some scrub brushes after the attachment. Eric, there was a question that came in regarding the AI CPA endorsement. And I thought maybe this is a good time since you're on this. Some of the, yeah, why, so, did the, why did the AI CPA endorse this over other accounting software packages? That's a great question. And um, part of it has to do with the audibility of the application itself. So this record keeping here um, no longer do I have to search emails about questions about a certain transaction if I needed to. I can have the, that conversation take place on the record itself. I can have the backup on the attachment itself. Um, some of you are using things like uh, Sage Paperless or TimberScan. And if you, if you are, then there's um, a drill back right from the transaction itself to those to those systems to be able to access um, anything that was put into those systems. Um, so the, the traceability, the auditability uh, of the transactions is all there as well as um, an audit trail of how this transaction was uh, processed over time. So if there was approvals, if there were, um, you know, edits made to the transaction. We can see all of these things that on the audit trail, it was created, an attachment was um, added and then it was submitted for approved and then it was approved by Emma. So Josh created it, Emma approved it. 
this budget, spending with budgets. So there is some uh, evaluation of the budget. Okay. So we can see um, kind of that, that trace back of that transaction over time. We also have the ability to look at and enforce budget amounts. So this budget, this button here that says so show the spending insight is going to show me what the budget amount is for this specific coding. So for this job, this cost code in materials. So you can choose which dimensions you're, but you're budgeting on. So if you didn't want to budget for cost type, for example, and you just were doing it on job and cost code, you can leave it at that. But we can see that the budget was $3,060. And this transaction was the 6350. So I can see the remaining amount. So again, the approver will have that all at their fingertips when they go to look at this transaction for approval process. So the AI CPA endorsement has to do with record keeping, has to do with enforceability of audits uh, and audit trails, the traceability has to do with the attachments and backups. Um, all of those things make the system itself um, uh, very easy to configure and audit the, uh, so you can um, trace back to the details. What I'll do is I'll put in the in the chat for everybody as well, a link to a uh, um, website that talks about the designation as the preferred provider of accounting systems um, from the AICPA. So I'll, I'll include that here in just a moment. Great, thanks, Nick. <clears throat> All right. So I've shown here a little bit of this accounting dashboard. Um, right from the dashboard, I, I showed you drilling back on the commitment. We can also drill back on the records themselves. So for these individual projects, if I wanted to see this project set up, for example, I could click on a project here, and this gives me, gets me to the record of where that project is set up. I can see the job name. I can see this job type is hotel. And what's really nice, another nice feature here is that we can add on the fly if we need to. So a job type, if we want to allow users to be able to add additional job types and we don't have it in the list, we can click on add and that just brings us to a window where then we can add that information to it. Clear that out. So uh, the description, again, this is just the basic job setup information. You can set up the project manager for the job here. So we have lots of different information we can track on the job, including the estimates for the job. Okay. We'll get more into that job setup in a little bit. As I mentioned, this next generation of accounting system looks at how we want to organize and report on our data. So this is a financial report here where we're looking at this project overview. It's pulling project information into our financial report. But Intact knows that you don't just need to know the necessarily the job, the specific individual jobs, but that we want to categorize and roll up sometimes. And so this report here is the same report as, as the above one, but this one subtotals it by job type. So I can see these hotel job types, for example, broken down into each individual hotel job. And I can decide if I wanna show each individual job or just roll it up by, hotel, uh, by the job type. And I'm just using job type here as an example, but really any of these um, these fields on the job itself, here's the job type, can be used for reporting purposes, even down into our financial reports. So I could show, I could say, show me a, a profit and loss statement, but for my hotel jobs. Okay. So any of these, or I could say, show me a PL or show me a WIP report for all of my jobs that have Gregory as my project manager. Furthermore, we can add any additional fields on this that we want. 
So we can add a field and then pivot all our reports, again, or subtotal those reports based off of that field. Okay, so in the, the, new, the new generation of this accounting, the new, um, yeah, like I said, the new generation of the accounting software is giving us tools to be able to report and pull the data out, consolidate the information, and um, then put it in the hands of the people that need it. So using these dashboards, we can give access to the people um, for the specific reports that they need. So as a project manager, maybe I just need to see my specific projects. And when I log in, I'll see this dashboard filtered that way. So Eric, there's a question that came in. How many different uh, levels of WIP review edits can be maintained per cycle? I mean, so basically how, how many edits could be saved uh, as part of that? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. It's, it's really not limited. Um, you, so all of our forecasts and job estimates can be copied, edited, and then reforecasted. So um, through those, those WIP reports, any of those um, change orders could be included or excluded. So we have the ability really to uh, configure and report on as many different iterations as we want to on uh, from a WIP schedule as we want to update it. Maybe we're updating it monthly or quarterly um, to be able to track that. When I go back into this project here, um, we're tracking not only the estimates, but we're tracking the um, percent complete as of a given date for any date. So we could say, you know, as of today, our percent complete is X and as of tomorrow, it's X plus one. Um, so we have the ability to record over time percentage completes and reforecast and uh, the, the cost to complete as often as we wish. Right, thank you. And maybe, maybe at some point, if there's time, you could uh, potentially touch on the estimate to complete functionality that we see some of the operational sure. folks using. Yep. All right. So um, in addition to reports, we have the ability to report on graphs uh, here too on this dashboard. So I can see my project estimate versus actual. So as this lime green color fills this teal color, I know I'm getting towards the end of my project. Um, so we have quick visual indicators of the progress of a project as well. And as I mentioned, we can have a lot of different dashboards for a lot of different purposes. So here's an approval dashboard and thinking, what things do I want to know about transactions when I go to approve them? I may want to know um, what money is coming in and what money is going out, right? My customer aging and my vendor aging, my accounts payable, my accounts receivable and cash balance. So I can see here quickly get a snapshot of those things and then look to see what is outstanding for me to approve. So I have some journal entries to approve here, it looks like. Actually, speaking of approvals, um, Intact has just recently introduced uh, some artificial intelligence and machine learning technology that, that are going to help approvals um, flow through the system. So I'm gonna switch over to a specific report as an example. This report is just a very base report, basic report that I showed and did some conditional formatting that says for this GL account number, I'm just looking at what has hit my bank fees account over the course of a year. And I can see the status and I have some conditional formatting that says if it's not posted, then highlight it. So I'll just make those blue. And so I have these five transactions sitting out waiting to be approved. They've been submitted. And what the artificial intelligence inside of Intact does is it looks at the, the trend of what has hit this GL account in the past. And you can see it's around $250. The highest amount here is in May for $270. And so I have some transactions coming in and a number of them are over the highest amount of 270. 
Now what INTAC does is it evaluates several conditions of what has been submitted for approval. One of them being the dollar amount. So in this case, it's going to evaluate the amount posted to the bank services charges account. And it's going to tell me which ones are outliers. So I'm just gonna to go to my approvals window here. So here's those five transactions that are sitting out there for, to be approved. Two of them, it says, are regular. They're not outliers. And they're probably fine to approve. There's nothing odd with them. But these three have a uh, indication that it's an outlier transaction. There's something going on with that transaction that's odd. So if I click on one of those, it's going to say, uh, it tells me here, this unusual historical matches have been found. And then if I click on or hover over the line items, it's going to tell me that th this amount is unusual for this account. So this transaction has an unusual amount and I may want to evaluate this. I may want to add a comment to it and ask, uh, you know, why is this, um, this amount double or, or out of the ordinary? So it focuses the energy on what needs the energy and time. Um, auditors now look at, have software that evaluates your entire system and pulls out outliers. And that's how it chooses, that's how the software chooses what things to ask for details or backup on. Well, there's no reason why that information can't also be um, evaluated real time as you post the transaction or as you submit it for an approval and then report to the approver, this is, this is out of the ordinary. You could- and this is, Yeah, ahead. and this is, a, this is a great point. So we're showing it right now on the GL side, right? But Intac's plan is to actually be rolling this out for all subledgers, all modules. So from a project perspective, think about catching those, you know, big, you know, uh, mistakes, if you will, or those outliers on a project, much more real time, much more having much more agility with that. And the same sort of uh, machine learning analyzing of, of data is going to be rolled into modules like the, the job costing construction module um, as well. You can think of all the places that this might be useful. For example, if you're posting an AP transaction to a vendor that usually has a purchase order or subcontract agreement, they might notice that that's, that's an outlier. You usually don't post AP transactions to this vendor, or you usually don't use this coding, um, this specific general ledger account for this vendor. Okay. So you can, you can uh, kind of see how that the, the computer as it, as it looks at and reviews your data is going to be able to identify things that may be of import to you. All right. So I'm going to jump into my, um, my general construction com entity here and take a look at some jobs. Um, so within the jobs here, we have uh, a list of jobs and these lists inside of Intact are pretty common across all sets of data. So here we have uh, a few, a few different jobs that are just for this entity. So I'm not able to view the other entities jobs, but if I go back to my top level and go to the jobs and I want to view all the jobs across all companies, I can do that here as well. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here when you compare it to um, Sage 300 CRE, for example, is that you're in Sage 300, you used to having a job and then, and then the, the you can have the extras of the phase of the job. So you kind of have a two level hierarchy. The intact can go um, as deep as you want. In this case, I have one, two, three, four levels of hierarchy. So I have the subdivision and then the subdivision is broken up into individual lots. Individual lots are broken up into phases. And then on those phases, I have individual change orders that get attributed to the phase as um, kind of a sub project there. So we can drill back those, or, uh, we can 
uh, continue to have that hierarchy as far down as we want. And then when we report on it, we can roll those that information up. All right. The same thing goes for our cost codes. So if I look at the uh, cost code catalog, we can set up standard cost codes to use across the system, but we can set up multiple sets of standard. So I have some developer cost codes here. And again, I can go multiple levels of hierarchy. Um, if I click on R, I have uh, like a res set of residential cost codes as well. So a different set of cost codes that I might want to add to the project. Here are my GC uh, cost codes I have as a different subset that I could use on individual projects. So you can set these up to have uh, different groups of cost codes that you can add and select which cost codes you want to add to an individual project. Okay. In addition to those, you have the ability to on the fly add a new cost code. So if you have a specific thing that uh, one customer wants you to track on a project that's outside of the norm for cost codes, um, you could add a, a uh, ad hoc cost code to a job as well. As, as you get used to, as you get into that job. All right. So in addition to this data tracking, Intact offers a lot of potential for different workflows as well. I briefly mentioned some approvals processes and, and there certainly are different levels of a different approval workflows that you can set up. So you can set up workflows that are based off of dollar value. So if, um, if you wanted to say when it gets a certain dollar value, then it has one approval um, process. And if it is a different dollar value, then it goes up to a different level. So that's certainly something that you can do. You can do it based off of the coding, whether it's a department manager or a project manager that goes through those approvals. So I'm just going to show some of these approval policies we have. We can set up all different kinds of rules that we want. So if it's based off of value, based off of departments or managers, projects, or we can hard code individual names as well. And we can add different steps into that approval process. So that's one way that helps us to walk through um, the workflows. And another is we can define our transactional workflows. So for example, in purchasing, we could say we have purchase orders for stock or for inventory. They get received and then they get matched to the invoice, that three-way match. Or we could say we have a requisition that goes to a purchase order and just goes to a vendor invoice. So we can set up as many different workflows. This is around purchasing, but we could do the same thing for around billing. As many different workflows with as many different steps as we want. And each step could require additional fields or um, have a certain approval policy applied to it. All right. We also have workflow around uh, retainage. So, uh, Intact can, of course, uh, withhold the retainage both, both on the AP and on the AR side. But the next step of that is not just to withhold the retainage, but how does that retainage get released? So within Intact, we can say um, we have this process or this workflow for release of retainage. Every invoice that was retained would get added to the list here um, of the amount that was retained. So this invoice was $1,000, 10% was retained. And when I'm ready to rele release that retainage, I can come in here and check the box that I want to release this retainage. I could release all of it, or I could say I want to just release $50 of that retainage. Or instead, I could say I want to um, do a percentage release. So let's say I wanted to release 35%, and all of the invoices that were retained would then um, be ready to release 35%. And when I release it, when I click on this button to release it, then it creates an invoice for me to pay, a bill for me to pay for that released retainage. So it ma maintains that, um, kind of that retainage ledger to make sure that 
all of the, uh, we're accounting for and working through the workflow of all of that retainage. All right. Eric, we did have a question that came in regarding um, uh, credit cards. So uh, can, the question is, can credit card transactions be uploaded as a file that detail individual vendors from each purchase? Yes, so, um, so credit card transactions can be uploaded. Certainly they can. Uh, what is coming here, and I'll just show it from the checking account side of, side of things, is to take that next step to have a feed as well. So this is a checking account instead of a credit card, but this is coming for credit cards as well. I think it's um, it's okay. set to be released this year. But um, what we have here is, is what's called the banking cloud. And if I just click on connect here, what this allows me to do is to tie into um, the, the different banks to have a feed of transactions as they clear the bank, automatically clear and get matched up inside of Intact. So you can see here's the most popular nine banks, but you can really search it's over 3000 banks um, that you can choose from just by selecting the website. Um, here, so if I just type in bank of, it's just gonna start filtering in my, the name of my bank, but um, you, you can find your bank and then tie in to have those. And this is coming for credit cards so that we'll have a constant feed of credit cards available as well. So you're saying yes. that process is gonna be significantly easier as it's gonna, once you've connected up and allowed that those credit card feeds to come in, it's gonna bring it in automatically and allow and do some level of matching uh, for you. Exactly, yep. So it uh, improves that process significantly. Right, thank you. Another thing I'll point out here that coming uh, in the next quarter is um, vendor payments and automatic vendor payments. And this is, a, this is a program that will allow you to automate the process of paying uh, your vendors if you so choose. And what that means is that if you process a, uh, you approve a payment for a vendor, you can select this payment method. So CSI as the payment method, you can, instead of printing, you could select print checks, you could select create ACH file, but you could also select the CSI payment method. And if you do that, then CSI, uh, the CSI payment method will take care of paying the vendor for you. If that means printing a check and stuffing in an envelope, that's what they'll do. If it means creating an ACH file and drawing that out, um, that's what they'll do. And if it means using a virtual card, almost like a debit card for the bank account, um, then they'll do that. And it's a very inexpensive way to process um, the, the vendor payments. So it's uh, just automating that, taking acknowledging the fact that so much of us, our work is done remotely or um, you know, not in an office today, get, enabling you to make those payments from without having to be at a printer or uh, upload things directly to the to a portal on a bank. Yeah, and really, it's actually cheaper than printing your own. Um, when you consider all the costs, it's actually going to be less money using a service like this than it was to maintain, you know, your printer and stuff the envelopes and and do postage. Even um, comes out to, to being less money. One other thing, I guess, I would just point out there as well, Eric. This is really a great example, and this is this sort of highlights this this huge chasm of what it was like to be being in the on-premise world, where you know it just was not possible to roll out this sort of technology improvements um, this rapidly. And it's really the difference of moving to sort of a cloud-based accounting package. You're seeing these sort of you know a lot of these features that are coming in are not features that are. You're, you're spending more money and opting into. They're, they're features that are inherent with the um, investments that Sage is making in the platform on a quarterly basis. Exactly. All right. So yeah, so that's a good questions. And Nick, let me know, I'm not watching the Q&A, so let me know if other questions are 
I mean, yeah, there's one question that, that just came in. Is there the ability to have burden costs and real costs and job costs and limit who can see the real costs? Yeah. Just about the labor, as you would imagine. Yep. Yeah, great question. Um, I, one of my favorite features of Intact, actually, that doesn't get enough credit. So I'm just going to go into um, a job here. And within any of these jobs, um, we can create what's called transaction rules. And transaction rules handle what happens when somebody posts a time entry on this project. So you can have, for example, you can have a, maybe the employee's rate is, I don't know, let's say it's $30 an hour. Okay, so you can say automatically when they post a time entry to that uh, project, they can say that the the, um, the rate of the estimated labor cost for that is $30 an hour. So they worked one hour, it's gonna be book $30 of estimated payroll costs. So we can see in that on that day, we can see the actual impact of the time entries as they happen in real time if, we, if we're entering time sheets into intact. Um, next thing that we can do is we can add any additional costs here. So we could say, we wanna estimate a 23% burden for that, that um, a time entry. So we could say that, well, there's the $30, then there's an ad additional 23% burden that we wanna do. And we wanna book a unbilled revenue um, transaction for the billing rate of that employee. So we can not only see the estimated cost in real time, we can see the estimated billing value on those TM projects of where things are at. So we have on these rules, we can create as many different um, transactions that happen automatically to give us real time reporting and then control who can see those. Uh, the second part of that question is who can see those actual versus estimated or standard versus actual uh, costs on a project. All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna bring us back to the dashboards here and a few different things I wanna point out. So again, this is my, this was my uh, home dashboard. I talked a little bit about the reports, but I wanna talk a little bit about the statistical information as well. So Intact keeps not only a general ledger for accounting purposes, but it also keeps a statistical ledger. So you can see here, my active job count is 21. I have 21 active jobs. As soon as they close that job, that 21st job, then it will be 20 uh, active jobs. So this is automatically updated in real time, booking those statistical journal entry, your statistical counts. I added two new jobs this month. And then I can do any calculations I want as well. So calculations based off of what's in my general ledger, looking at profit margins. I could do calculations based off of number of jobs. So if I have 21 active jobs this month, let's say, and I'm looking at my revenue for this month, I could you know, do a, the amount of revenue per job on average, which may not be a, an exact thing you wanna do, um, but the idea is there that you can do any calculation. Oftentimes we're booking um, uh, square footage information as statistical as well. So when I add a job, maybe I have a, have a field that says, what's the square footage of this job? And that books that says, that books automatically to say, this is how much we have um, for square footage. And then all of those, those amounts can be used to, uh, to allocate costs as well. So we can allocate costs by square footage or by, number of people working on a job or anything like that, any statistics we wanna we want to track. Okay, so I, I looked a little bit at the approvals um, dashboard. I look here at the financial ratios. Here's a very simple dashboard, just looking at these performance cards, looking at current ratios, um, some debt ratios, and my data is not, no, let's just hop back to today. See if I have any more interesting numbers. We can do comparisons versus the pr previous month or versus budget or versus um, the previous year. So we'll, 
Again, we have a real um, broad control over these dashboards. And to this point of, of creating dashboards, the dashboards can be added to or created by accounting users. You don't have to have any knowledge of the system. You can, if you have, it's really just controlled by security. So if I click on this plus here, that's how I add an item to the dashboard. If I wanted to add a report, I would just select a report and then I would see all the reports in my system. I wanna select a performance card, which is what these little boxes here are. I just need to know which, this example, which general ledger. So if I wanted to say my accounts receivable for the current month compared to the pre previous period, let's just give it a title of AR. And what do I want? How do I want this comparison to be? Do I wanna use a, a thumb or a stop sign, or a, a stop sign signal or anything like that? So now I added this AR button here and this AR uh, performance card here with drill down. And I can filter those as well if I want to filter this specific one. So we have about five minutes left here and we have, have had questions that have been coming in. Um, just a reminder, if anyone does have questions, um, just Eric can go at this for like two days straight. He loves it. So um, want to make sure we have enough time to answer anything else that comes in. And we'll also be providing um, contact information uh, should you have any questions you want followed up on after. So Eric, I just need two minutes at the end if you have another five, if you want to go. Sure. A couple of things I want to point out here for usability. Um, when I look at the list of data, so here I'm looking at AP bills. I have the ability to filter anything, right? Anything that I want. So if I wanted to say uh, filter with anything with lumber in the name here, then I would just type in lumber and it's gonna filter all my bills where the vendor name has lumber in it. All of these lists are interactive. I can add columns to it. Um, so this is gonna show me all of the fields on my bills. If I wanted to add additional fields to this, I can sort them and like I showed, filter them. And then I can save them in all different kinds of views if I want. And that goes the same with for my vendor lists or my, uh, I don't know, banking transactions or general ledger transactions. So we get a good view of different activities. We can export these reports or these lists right to Excel. So we don't need the Office Connector or anything like that to do exports. We can just click on the button to do that. Um, whether they be reports or these, these lists. Um, there's other dashboards as well, uh, other types of dashboards. This is a new, um, it's called Interactive Explorer. Uh, so let me just quick run this. This is an interactive dashboard that allows you to do further evaluation on the software. So this is looking at AP aging. So we can see the AP aging, several different AP aging graphs here looking at it by customer, or excuse me, by vendor. And then we have all these filters too. So if I wanted to say um, Hanson here to filter it based on Hanson plumbing, I can do that and it re-renders my dashboard, um, aging graphs, all of, all of that information that way. And I can continue to drill down from here. Um, so that's a, a, an easy, again, another dashboarding tool that allows us to do uh, interactive graphing. Um, navigation in the system, anytime I want to flag something as a favorite, a menu as a favorite, I can just click on a star and it adds it to my favorites and I can quickly navigate the system. And I can also use what's, uh, what are called uh, workbench areas that have a more of a graphical representation of the system moving through the system. So entering bills, paying bills, or approving bills, paying bills, approving the payments. Thanks, Eric. So I think I'd like to, um, uh, thanks for that presentation. That was great. I would uh, see if I can grab control back just so I can wrap up here. Um, I think you may have to give me control. There we go. Yep. All right, there you go. Great. 
just going to share this last screen. Um, so um, just sort of here in, in closing, um, wanted to thank everybody. We had a lot of great questions that have came through. Um, really terrific questions, actually. There's uh, a few things just kind of want to leave you with um, to, to maybe think a little bit about. Um, sorry, let me get to my slide. So a uh, couple things to consider as we wrap up. Um, we've heard this from a lot of our customers. We actually have had customers move, that have moved to Sage and Tech construction firms uh, well before there was even very de uh, depth of construction functionality within it. And time and time again, we hear we wish we would have done this sooner. And really, that, that, that's a statement that's really more focused on there was items that were many of the items that folks were doing manually, they were able to automate within the software. A um, couple other things to just consider, you know, Sage is um, making this investment. And one of the things they've done in, in for the for 2021 is to really step up and where there's a good fit for customers help um, uh, incentivize them to make this move. So want to make sure that you're aware of that. Um, we can also, you know, oftentimes we see we can greatly reduce the number of third party solutions needed to perform the functions that we currently did previously, um, just because there is a lot of functionality within Intac to, uh, to accomplish that. And then, you know, last thing and most importantly, uh, we want to help work with you to, to make sure that this is a good fit. So, uh, you know, we're more than happy to do personalized demonstrations, walk through, you know, scenarios that you're sort of struggling with. Um, currently, those are great opportunities for us and, and the consulting team to engage and just work with you to see if there's, you know, efficiencies and, and things we can gain from, from Sage Intact. Um, or within Sage 300 for that matter. So uh, I wanna thank everybody for attending. Really, really appreciate all the participation. Um, my contact information is here. Happy to answer any questions you may have. And uh, again, just thank you very much for your time and, and attention. It's greatly appreciated.